Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. It's Janet Wakeland here with Remarkably Created. And starting today, December 1st, all the way through the end of December, even though I've listed it as December 23rd, we are going to take a break for the 24th and 25th. But throughout this entire month, we will be counting down to the new 2024 Stampin' Up! Spring Catalog and celebration time. What we'll be doing every day again, except for the 23rd or the 24th and 25th, is we're gonna be looking at new product. I'll be sharing some tips. I'll be sharing some reviews, pros and cons, based on my experiences using it. Um, we'll look at some samples for inspiration. We may make a card or two throughout this time. In addition to this live video that you'll get every day, there'll be two other posts every day. That gives you three times to comment, to share, whatever, increasing your chances of winning a daily giveaway. The daily giveaway has a little twist. I have this big sleigh over here, just filled with all kinds of prizes and we'll restock it throughout um, this countdown period. But the twist on the daily giveaway is, is that when you win a prize, you can pick a friend to receive the same prize as you, provided that they are a follower of my Facebook page. So this is a good time to share my Facebook friends with you or uh, my Facebook page with your friends because then you can play Santa for them. In addition, there'll just be a third post. Um, so there'll be a post at 9 a.m., a post at 3 p.m., and a post at 9 p.m. One will be a Facebook Live. One will just be kind of a fun engagement post. Um, things like our Saturday smile and then lots of fun little um, things related to the holidays. And then one will be one of the samples and or a tip related to what we showed in the live. So let's go ahead and let's slide this video over. And I am not necessarily going to go in order from front to back in the catalog just because my initial pre-purchase of new product were random selections from the catalog. On December 5th, I will be able to do another pre-order from this catalog, picking up the things that may help me get back on track to putting it in order. One of the things in the post early this morning was this handout here. It's done as a JPEG. Simply right-click on it, save it to your computer, and you can print it out. And you can use it to take notes based on what you like, don't like, little crafting tips, color combinations, whatever it is that I share throughout the month and you can print this as many times as you need. And um, if you have questions at all, this would be a great place to make notes of questions that you have so that you can ask them and then make sure that they get answered. If you're new to my page, welcome. I am so excited that you are here. Uh, make sure that you like and follow so that you don't miss any of the fun this month. Um, in addition to the sneak peeks, we will be incorporating some of the products that are retiring that we are saying goodbye to. And we'll be incorporating products from the annual catalog that are available, as well as products that are exclusively online um, that you can see anytime you visit my website. These again are the two catalogs where the new product is coming from. And if you don't have a demonstrator here in the United States that sends you a catalog and that you work with, please make sure that you message me um, with your address and email and we will make sure to put you on my list. I am ordering these catalogs on December 5th and I expect to have them in the mail to you on December 15th. Absolutely amazing reading material. I've already got mine really marked up and dog-eared. So. With all of that good stuff aside, let's just jump right in. And we're gonna start with the beautiful Lavender Sweet. I don't know about you, but I love lavender. I love the smell of it. I love the look of it. It's definitely a very easy plant to grow. It's another reason why I like it, because I don't have my mother's gardening skills. But I find it just a very soothing smell. So I absolutely love um, lavender. And that's the name of this sweet is the perennial lavender sweet. And we'll look at everything a little bit closer, but you're gonna have two bundles that are part of this suite. And again, we're gonna look at things closer. You have some gems that are part of this suite. And we've got 10 great samples, so make sure you stick around to the end to showcase, with, um, showcase for you. You have some die cut butterflies. There's 40 in the pack and I'll be sharing with you some fun ways that we've altered that. And then you have some beautiful designer papers 
that are part of this suite. So let's unpack that all and put that down right here and work our way through all of the goodness that is part of this suite. And I gotta take this little headband off. I didn't pin it in my hair head like I normally do. So we're gonna take it off today so it's not bobbling away in the screen. But let's start first with the two different bundles. One of the nice things about a suite of products is that they are all designed by Stampin' Up's artisans to be very cohesive. They work really well together. They give you um, products that are color coordinated and lots of flexibility and um, variations. The thing about a um, suite is that there's a single code where you can order everything in the suite or everything in the suite is available individually is what I'm trying to say. So you can either order the entire suite with the easy I want it all button or you can pick and choose items that you like that round out things that you might already have in your crafting stash. Bundles are discounted 10%, which means that when you are picking up um, the suite, it is actually discounted based on the bundles that are in it. So let's take a look first. Mm, excuse me. <coughs> oh my gosh. It's gonna be a long day if I do this on our video. <coughs> Something's got my nose this morning. So the first one, I got them backwards, is the print the, the painted lavender. Okay. And this is just images. There are no greetings in this stamp. And I'm a big fan of stamp sets that are just images because I get more images and I can always use a greeting from any other set or a set that's just greetings, which always makes me happy. So you've got just greetings in it. These stamps can work as what we call two-step. You can stamp the stems and then you can put the flowers on them, stamp the stem and then put the flowers on them. You have a coordinating set of dies so that you don't have to freehand everything. And let me move this over here so you can see which dies cut what out. And especially when it comes to these really thin little um, stems and stuff, it's always nice to have a die. I'm notorious for cutting them a little too close. And we've got our little pieces here. And then we've got this here. So you can see that you're gonna be able to cut um, seven of the different stamped images. And then in addition to those, and one of them you have doubled up so that you can cut that many more flowers. You can cut eight flowers at once. In addition, then you have three dies that are going to create pieces that are just nice solid pieces of cardstock, which make nice fillers. This leaf piece here, actually cuts and embosses as well. So you've got some different fun things to work with. I will tell you the one challenge that I found working with this set because I believe in being honest as part of my product reviews, those pros and cons, is that these are designed that you can kind of do two step with them. But the dies cut them in one step. So a little bit different. I'll show you a little bit more when I'm talking about when we look at the samples that we used for this. Then the other fun new bundle is this perennial postage stamp. And I'm all about basic shapes. Basic shapes are so versatile, guys. And what's fun about these postage stamps dies is you've got them so that they're layered in size. You can use a big solid piece. You can use this now to cut a frame, a thin frame. You can see here, again, two different sizes or cut frames and then here you've got four that actually are staircased in size another little one here and then these little pieces are designed to turn them into tags or any of your other labels into tags um also will create great holes for bags and things like that and then this fun little piece does not die cut but it gives you that postal mark so it embosses a postal mark and I love that the postal mark is a butterfly because it ties into the accessories. We also have some um, self-adhesive small little butterflies that were released online. So lots of butterflies to work with. And then just as a note, these are here, you can see all of them. The largest one is three and three quarters by five inches. 
And the smallest one is 5 eighths by 1 and 3 eighths. So you've got this great variety to work with. The only thing I haven't done yet, and I'll do that later in my playtime, is I want to see how the deckled rectangles work within these um, so we can see what's out there and then what other dies would layer with them. Then we have this beautiful designer paper. Oh my gosh, this beautiful hand-painted paper by Stampin' Up! Artisans. So you've got this big beautiful bouquet here. And then on the flip side, we've got just a beautiful neutral. This one here, look at all the colors in this. This is one of the benefits of this paper that I actually fell in love with. Here we've got some beautiful ones. And this has got some tiny little butterflies in it. So you've got those tiny butterflies. And this paper I'm already in love with. It was really hard not to make every card with this print as well as this print right here. If I hold it up, it's got this white, kind of almost, you know, like you've used a little bit of craft ink or something. It's really, really pretty. Very soft and subtle for those of you that like small prints. And sometimes it's nice to have the small prints for tags and things like that. Sometimes with our bigger prints, when we're doing some of the embellishments or creating tags and stuff, you kind of lose what the image is. Where's my purple lovers? Look at that. And we've got these beautiful flowers. Again, another nice dainty small print. Another beautiful solid. And then a nice big bold watercolor. And look at this. This was my other favorite in the pack. I absolutely love this paper. So bringing this, all these back in for a second, I just want to show you again smaller, give you that visual so you can see all the prints. And per the catalog, this paper coordinates with Shaded Spruce, um, Lost Lagoon, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape, Berry Burst, and Fresh Freesia. As I was working with the paper, though, I found it extremely compatible with Pretty Peacock and Crumb Cake is a great base. And then the neutral that's in it is um, your basic white. Something else about this paper to me that was, if, if you bought nothing else but the paper to help you use up maybe some things in your stash. So what I found is, let's just pull some of this in again. There's that Lost Lagoon. There's that Shaded Spruce. And no, no, it's not in this paper, but you can see the shaded spruce up here in this paper. There's your um, Fresh Freesia and your Gorgeous Scrape, your Highland Heather, your Berry Burst. And then the Pretty Peacock, I think, really pulls those in, and you'll see that in the sample. And then your Crumb Cake. Stampin' Up! has some other papers, though. We have this trio of shimmer papers that is Gorgeous Scrape. Pretty Peacock, and then Petal Pink. And you're gonna have those two exceptionally well matched to the paper. And then Stampin' Up! has these soft shimmer papers. Can you see that little? This is Fresh Freesia. We have this textured paper in shaded spruce, so you're gonna be able to add some texture. We have some paper called White Center. So if I was to tear this, it has a white edge to it, and there, Two of the pieces in the pack are Berry Burst and Fresh Freesia. So again, more complimenting papers. And then back to that Soft Shimmer. The Soft Shimmer paper was almost coordinated to make this because four of those papers in the pack, look at that. You've got Fresh Freesia, Berry Burst, Lost Lagoon, and Pretty Peacock. So I was just totally blown away by how many other things in my crafting stash and available from the Stampin' Up! line of products that you can get to bring this to live or that you may have to bring this to live. So absolutely amazing. And then your little gems are Berry Burst, Gorgeous Grape, and Highland Heather, and all of them are in two different sizes. And self-adhesive, so you don't have to worry about any of the adhesives. So set that aside. Then one of the other things that I mentioned Oh, and let me bring this all back in for just a second. So the other thing that I found that was really pretty cool, and we'll just use this for a second, is the wavy trim ribbon is great. And this is being carried over, so it's not retiring. It is in the holiday catalog right now, but it will be available after um, that catalog retires. Even the pool party, bringing in some of this, that pool party, I love that just the little shades, so that ribbon's going to work great for you. We do have Lost Lagoon Ribbon, and that's going to work really well. 
And then we have Orchid Oasis, which is going to be a nice little contrast here with your gorgeous grape. And then debuting as well is we have this new gold. It's almost like leather. I don't know. Let's see if the camera will focus for us. There we go. So a gold leather. And that looks really good, too, with your neutral. So, again, so many things about it. And I'm real big on um, things that add value to what I already own. And this paper definitely... Um, makes my heart happy because it does just that. Another part of the suite are these die cuts. And in the die cut packet, you have 40 butterflies. So you have um, eight of each size. They are double-sided white, so you can change the directionality of your butterfly. So that's a big positive. So your butterfly doesn't always have to face this way because it's white on both sides. Your butterfly can be flying to the right instead of flying to the left. So um, now I've got songs stuck in my head. Every time um, I'm creating or doing stuff, I'll say something and it'll trigger a song. Is anybody else triggered by songs like I am and lyrics? So let's look at some of the fun things that you can do with these butterflies. So first, just press them down into your Versamark and then put gold embossing powder on them and make yourself some beautiful gold butterflies. Of course, you could do silver, you could make shiny black butterflies, you could do copper or whatever other color you have. You can use blending brushes and in this case, I started with um, Bubble Bath in the center, Highland Heather, and then I, I went out to the darker um, Gorgeous Grape. So I just used the, the small blending brush and added three colors to them. You can simply just color them with your blends or color them with your ink pad. Another way that you can color them is by spritzing them. It'll give you more of a watercolor look. Or you can actually do that same look by using our water painters and just kind of brushing the color across, um, getting kind of that depth and variation. And then what's fun as you work with all of your butterflies is if you keep a piece of cardstock underneath of you as you work, so in this case, I laid the largest butterfly down. I think it's on a card or is it this one? Nope, it's on a card. And I used the water painter brush and then I pulled out, kind of creating like a burst around my butterfly. This one was a little more challenging and I'm not sure yet. I gotta play with it just a little bit more. But because of the over overspray from spritzing, but not wanting to have any white between, I got a little bit of the color on all of them, but I'm sure we're gonna be able to turn that into a cre great creation. But you can indeed lay your butterflies down on your designer paper or cardstock and spritz them with um, reinker mixed with uh, rubbing alcohol and off you go. And did I have one more for you? I think the, oh, yep, I have one more. And then you can also just use your blending brushes. So in this case, I started, blended, moved, took that one off, moved it up, and just kept working my way up. And this is the byproduct of the one that was left, so twofer. Now I have a pretty border to put on a card and I have that. I think you guys are going to have just an amazing time with these butterflies. And just because they're part of the suite doesn't mean you have to buy the whole suite to get them. Again, you can simply just get a pack of butterflies. But I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with them. Back to the postage stamps, I wanna show you a fun thing that I discovered. Many times we will notch a card to kind of help hold our twine a little bit better so it's not rolling around. The postage stamp has natural notches, okay? And so it's really easy. You can do some fun weaving. You can just use a single notch to hold your twine in place. So I absolutely love that as another bonus of the postage stamps. And then I mentioned creating frames. So let's jump in and let's take a look at some samples and then I have um, a tip and a project for you. So here's our first one. And in this case, we're using Pretty Peacock, the background paper from the designer pack here, crumb cake. There's that little bit of shiny Pretty Peacock, a little bit more on the flower, and then just two of the little bling pieces, okay? Switching up colors just a little bit. Again, a lot of times what'll end up happening 
is you'll have that paper and all of your cards will kind of start to look like that. And you'll see that through here just because we really wanted to highlight that whole packet. But I also wanted to pull in a few other color combinations just to show you what's possible. So in this case, here's where I use that notch to really hold my twine. So just a small little element. And this is just a piece of retiring paper that I had in my scrap bin. Um, but it coordinates with the copper clay and the pretty peacock really well. Some of our metallic pieces up here, we just added thanks. And I just stamped and stamped off a little bit just to create that big bouquet and our little linen thread. So here we've got our butterflies flying up the card. We've got sending love and best wishes. That's the new greeting from the perennial postage. And then a little bit of our orchid oasis. And just to tone this down a little bit and pull in the lighter pieces of our butterfly, there's just a piece of Highland Heather cardstock that creates just a little edge along the card for you. This is the one that I'll showcase for you. I'll give you the tip on how to do this and kind of create this look. But here we just stamped along the top, turned the stamps upside down, and then created this hoping for better days ahead. This greeting is from Lasting Joy. And then just using up some of those holiday little flat sequins, they're still available and you're gonna find that this color here really kind of pulls in the Lost Lagoon, they go well together. So check that retiring list, guys. So here is another one and the background showcasing, it may be hard to see, I'm gonna, I didn't glue the whole corner down so I could show you, but this is that soft shimmer paper. We just cut the paper to kind of break up that print just a little bit and to allow a sliver of that green. You're Simply Marvelous, that's from the new perennial postage. And then in this case, we mixed a little bit of that shimmer, a little bit of solid, and then we stamped and put the flowers together from the lavender kit. So in this one here, kind of keeping that diagonal idea going, um, use the new hexagon punch that is available now you don't have to wait for the catalog for it and there is a new stamp set coming that will work with it in this case i layered the butterfly over a white one just to kind of pick up a little bit of the white that's in the card and it's glued here and then we put some little rhinestones down at center uh, its body a little bit of linen thread and then we just cut some pieces so it doesn't have that whole purple look that's part of that so one of the fun dies, it's actually two pieces. It creates beautiful bouquets. You're gonna have a lot of fun creating bouquets of flowers. And in this case, um, I went over the top with the bling because it is a special card. This card is designed to be a wedding card. And I think that we hoard our products way too much. We're always afraid to cut paper. We're always afraid of using up what we have. But then we always say to ourselves, oh my gosh, I haven't even used that. So I'm trying to personally in my own craft room stamp out that I haven't even used that. I want to be using my product and I want that guilt-free shopping, buying new stuff because that little voice in my head is say, isn't is saying, oh, you've never used that. So always and then may the years ahead be filled with lasting joy. Lasting joy is the name of the, the greeting set there. Then this is that paper that is part of the set bring that in, that's this paper. And it's just spritzed over, I laid the butterflies down, you can see the butterflies here, they almost look bleached, and spritzed over it with the pecan pie. And that darkened the paper up, kind of changing the look of it. Put the butterfly back on. In the paper pumpkin kits and other kits, you will find really narrow um, foam strips Hoard them. There's one thing I will tell you to hoard and use. They're perfect for the body center. If not, you can narrowly clip our dimensionals and pop the body up with them. Added some gold sequins and there's that new gold leather piece. And then lastly, this paper here is a little sneak peek. I used two products from this suite. So I created a frame with the perennial postage. Used the butterfly from the sweet. This paper here is celebration paper. It's our softly stippled. And then this paper here, I added some dots to the center flowers, but this paper is from our new 
lift something, lift it up, lift up in the sky. I, it's got all balloons in it and you'll see it within the next two days. So, um, but added that little balloon just to create a fun, pretty look. And in this case, because all of this is the focal point, I stamped Happy Mother's Day direct to the paper um, because I didn't need another piece elevated, if that makes sense. And then our iridescent disc guys, um, they are not retiring. They will be available too, and there's so many things that they go with. So let's slide all of this over and let me share with you that tip that I was mentioning. And let me bring this back in here because I know I glossed over it very fast. This is the greeting set. I love the mixed fonts in this greeting set and I love the greetings. This one, you are loved beyond measure. There's a measuring tip tape in the Rusty Toolbox, so you can definitely use that with that. Um, you mean the world to me. We have that big world background stamp. Thank you for your friendship. These words are all spaced that it's easy to get your scissors in between them, so you could simply just use the thank you if you wanted. Here for you always, you saw some of these greetings um, on the cards that I did. Um, you're simply marvelous. I can't thank you enough. I know you'll get through this. I love that. I love that sentiment. Great for the inside of the card, but you could also put it on the front and then write um, a nice message on the inside. Sending love and best wishes. Happy Mother's Day. So lots of great greetings in that. Okay, so we'll set these aside. And as my time allows while we're going through this um, countdown, I will be working to share with you um, these samples, posting them in an album up under photos. But don't be looking for them in the next um, day or two. And right now I'm working on creating the samples for the first week of showcasing um, the countdown. But as like I said, as my time allows, then we will go to it. So I have a piece of white cardstock. This is the piece that's going to be the piece that's going across. This piece here, how white it is, is going to totally be up to you. There's no rule. I'm just kind of showing you the basic technique, not giving you any measurements. And then you just need a really thin piece of like copy paper that you're going to use to help mask that center piece out. And let's pull this back in. And I've got three colors that I'm going to stamp with. Lost Lagoon, Calypso Coral, and Crumb Cake. And let's bring our stamp set in. So we've got the uh, Painted Lavender. It's that time of year where demonstrators are all fumbling with their words because we're learning new names so they don't come off of our tongue very easily. So I apologize for that if I stumble or misspeak. Okay, let's start with... Okay, let's start with our background piece. And I'm going to use some leaves for that. So... And in this case, I'm only putting ink on the top part because I don't want ink down here below. And you will have a little bit of a line. Well, hold on a second. This is not going to work the way I want it to. So let's just fold this piece of paper up. This is also a good use of your grid paper. So we can just fold that up. Take advantage of that grid paper that you have handy. And let's go back in this just make it easier and write here. So we've got our first color on there. Then let's go ahead and get some pretty flowers going. And let's use this one. We've got lots of choices here, guys. And you're going to see me stamp it once, twice, three times as I'm going across. What that does is that creates the depth and the shading. And you can always go back in with a darker one if you feel like you need another piece. So I'm going to go all the way to the edge. So we've got our first piece here. You can see where that line was. I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller. This top piece is gonna be just a little taller. Use the lines on my grids to make sure they're straight. And we're just gonna do the same thing. 
And I start with what I want in the background first and I build up, if that makes sense. So it's not necessarily lightest to darkest because the crumb cake is definitely lighter than my Lost Lagoon. But it's for me, it's background up, back to, back to top, bottom to top. And you want to make sure that you give a nice firm press. So you've got a piece that looks like that with a piece that's open in the center. That is where, like I could simply go ahead and stamp right in there if I wanted. I don't have to layer another piece on it if you don't want to. You could just simply now be done and put your greeting in that center opening and it really makes that greeting pop and has a pretty look. But I wanna give you a second tip and a second option. So you can either stop there, put your greeting on and be done with it, okay? Or let's bring our trimmer in let's add a little bit of just a little extra just a little bit of texture and something else to make it stand out just a little bit and again there's no exact measurement it's what you want it to be and how you want it to be spaced it's what looks good to your artistic eyes so i'm just simply creating some score lines on this and a lot of times this piece of paper here this element is going to be based on the size greeting that you're putting um, on the, in that centerpiece, if that makes sense. So this is a great, and you can do this horizontal or vertical, landscape or portrait, whichever it is. But what I did was I added some lines, and now you can see how that's raised. And when I put that down on, I have that little bit of extra, and that's exactly here. So in this case, I added that extra piece of paper and I found that easy, easier to do, but we could most certainly, the hard part with this is it needs to be on the back side, otherwise it's a dip in. So that's why we could do that. But we could most definitely add a dip in if we wanted to. Um, I can layer over this, I'm just gonna show you. So using that scoring tool and those scoring attachments in different ways, definitely again are gonna add that value. So now I can still just add my greeting and some pieces. And now you have one that's dipped in with no layers, one that is raised up and it's just a basic white layer. So have some fun. This is a great technique with any and all of your stamps. It's a great way to bring some colors in together and have some fun guys. So anytime you have any questions at all about anything that I've showcased, please ask them below. Um, if you're shy about commenting below, then message me your question. Uh, but don't forget that there are three posts. There'll be a post at three o'clock this afternoon, another one at nine. The, the more that you engage, the greater chances that you have of winning our daily prize. Um, tomorrow we'll announce our first winner. So every single day we'll announce a winner. And then what I will do weekly in my newsletter is I will list the winners up to the point of my newsletter. And then once our countdown is all over, I will list the entire list of winners. So just in case you missed your name, you're going to get several chances to see your name again. And if you see your friend win, guys, be a friend. She might or he might pick you, okay, to be their, their prize buddy. So make sure you say, hey, guess what? Janet just announced your name when you see that happening. So I'll see you guys tomorrow with some fun products on a Facebook Live. But keep watching for all of the posts. It's going to be an amazing, merry, merry month of crafting. Thanks, guys.